Sola Scriptor, everyone. This is His Word Only. Alright, let's get right into God's Word. So, beforehand, before we get started, um, I want to address um, Bride in the comments there. And I think I didn't give you a, I should have gave you a better answer to the Bible's you know, answer, whatever. But I want to show you why I stick to the King James Bible. And I would prefer everyone to stick to the King James Bible. Because, first of all, you have copyright laws. So they have to switch it around anyways for that. And usually with like these new modern Bibles, there's always like one group that's making them. So you only get one opinion per se, right? While the King James Bible was made by 80 different linguists and experts and stuff, right? So you're getting all different kinds of opinions. But I want to show you. I don't. I just don't want to say, you know, it's, it's okay to parallel Bible, and, you know, and put compare Bibles and stuff, you know, but make sure you always stick to the King James Bible when you're studying, and I'll, sh I'll show you why, I'm sorry, anyways, here's the King James Version, Isaiah 34, 11 to 17, and I've had this on my channel with uh, Lilith, um, the Queen of Heaven video, but anyways, but the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, now, already, <laughs> we're off here, now, the pelican, I guess you can say the cormorant is kind of like a pelican. But the bittern, this is a bittern. <laughs> so already we're off track. A large marsh bird of the heron family, right? This one says porcupine, the Amplified Bible, right? But anyways, let's keep going. And the barren shall possess it, the owl also, and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion, and the stones of emptiness. This one says, and the bittern and the raven will dwell in it, and he will stretch over it. You know, Edom, the measuring line of confusion, and the plummet stones of chaos over the nobles. But anyways, I just, I just want to get to the point here. Okay, and they shall call its nobles to proclaim, this is amplified, to proclaim the kingdom, but nothing shall be there, and all its princes shall be no more. Alright, let's, let's see what the King James says here. They shall call the nobles, therefore, to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. Right? You see how one little word totally changes the whole premise change it from her to it <laughs> it seems just mundane right but when you see her princes shall be nothing there's something bigger going on there right all right let's keep going and thorns shall come up in its place in strongholds nettles and brambles and fortresses and it shall be a habitation of jackals and abode for ostriches all right king james version and the thorns shall come up in all her places there we go again nettles and brambles and the fortresses thereof and it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for owls this is what the Amplified Bible says. And it shall be a habitation for jackals and a boat for ostriches. You see why I say stick to the King James Bible and bride if you're watching this. Because the Lord's been kicking me on this. <laughs> you know, kicking my butt over this. And I want to bring people the truth and I want to call myself on that out on that comment because I should have done a better job of that but anyways um, I could keep going like here the wild beasts of the desert will meet here with the howling creatures wolves and hyenas and the shaggy wild goat 
were called to his fellow, the night monster will settle there and find the place of rest. That's what the King James says. The wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl, a.k.a. Lilith, is what this means here, also, also shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. This is where it says the night monster will settle there and find a place of rest. See how words can change things. So be very careful. You are trusting yourself to the Bibles that we read, right? So if you are going to stick to the Amplified, keep a King James Bible right there next to you. Always have that as the foundation. Because from my experience, the King James Bible... Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what the heck that was. But anyways, the King James Bible has always, in my experience, stuck true. And you can see why. But anyways, you know, enough of that. We're going to get into the subject today, which is quite an interesting one. <laughs> as I know people have always have had this on their minds. And what it, you know, is Christianity there to control the masses, right? You hear it all the time. And that's all it was created for, just to control the masses. Well, I'm going to show you scriptures and argue against that today. So, right now... We're going to start with Deuteronomy 14, 22 through 29. Thou shalt, tr oh, and this is about the tithe and how uh, the Levites didn't get an inheritance. And I'll show you why. Thou shalt truly tithe all thy increase of thy seed, and that the field bringeth forth year by year. Did you notice that the field bringeth forth? Anyways, and thou shalt eat, therefore, the Lord thy God and the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Did you see that? So when you tithe you're going to do it to where God places his name to where he shows you right? The tithe of thy corn and of thy wine and of thy oil and thy firstlings of thy herds and thy flocks and that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. I have a one question. Do you see anywhere in there where there's money? Okay. And if it the way be too long for thee, so thou art not able to carry it, you know, your firstlings and your flock, you're giving your first fruits, right? Or if the place be too far from thee, so if the God place chooses is too far, in which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. When the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, bind up the money in thy hand, and shalt go unto a place which the Lord God shall choose. But ready for this? This is awesome right here, guys. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, hmm, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice thou in thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. See, I, in my opinion, I think God didn't give the Levites an inheritance so they didn't get too big for their britches just like pastors do today and the rabbis and all these gatekeepers right but anyways at the end of three years thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up upon within thy gates and the Levite because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat, and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thy work of thine hand, which thou doest. Does that sound like a God who wants to control you, wants to worship me, you know, or else? Sounds like a guy, God who wants you to be at peace. 
right? So he wants to lead you to peace, right? While the world will tell you money, 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 you know, give me that money. Well, most pastors out there will say, got to tie that Isaiah $52.53 seed, you know, 53 cents seed, bogus. If someone's doing that, get away from them. Get away from that church. And if you're watching TVN, get away from TVN. Because really all it is is a bunch of new age mumbo jumbo. Prosperity gospel, right? Law of attraction from the new age. Name and claim it, right? All that stuff. It's all new age. When you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, right? But anyways, there it's all about money. Like the churches are set up around money nowadays and it's disgusting. And no wonder why people don't you know, think this. You have the Catholic Church who's not Christian by the way. They're called universal for a reason. And I'm sorry if that offends people, but it's the truth. You know, where do you see any of those rituals in the Bible? You don't, right? But anyways, I, I'm getting too far. Alright. Numbers 18, 24 through 28. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore, I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, when you take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering for it, or of it for the Lord, even tenth part of the tithe. This is food, by the way, guys. I don't know if you're getting the gist here. It's food. But anyways, and this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you, as though it were the corn of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the wine press. Thus ye also shall offer a heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Israel, and ye shall give therefore er, thereof the Lord heave offering to Aaron the priest. It's food, guys. The tithe is food. And the people got to partake of it, and if you couldn't make the trip, you got to sell those first your firstlings, right, of your flock. And you get to go buy strong drink and enjoy yourself. Yes, that totally sounds like an oppressive God to me. Right? I mean, when you read all these other pagan gods, man, it's, it's ridiculous how oppressive they are. But this God's different. Anyways. Malachi 3, 6-15 For I am the Lord... I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Right? So you're going to have the church tell you that God changed and, you know, that the law is done away with and all this stuff, right? Well, here is the Lord saying, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. You see why the church is falling away? Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Because they wanted money, right? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, meat is food, right? It could mean bread, all kinds of stuff back then, right? It wasn't just animal products. But anyways, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. It will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, 
and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And on all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? We haven't done anything wrong. We were casting out demons in your name, right? But ye have said, It is vain to serve God, and what profit is it? To have kept his ordinance. And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, that they work wickedness, or they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. But anyways, I know what people are going to say here is Paul, you know, <laughs> here, right, where is it, right here, or Paul says, uh, where is it, Yeah, anyways, okay. Why did Paul write to the assembly of Colossae that Yahweh forgave all trespasses? Guys, you can say God, Yahweh, whatever. You know. I would be careful of these type of things, but I just want to say I, I agree with this is the best explanation of it. Even though I don't agree with the full premise of it, but this is the best explanation that I've seen anyone give. Anyways, why did Paul write to assembly of Colossae that Yahweh forgave all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, that was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his tree? Colossians 2.14 Was he saying that the law was no longer in effect, essentially blotted out, nailed to the torture, stake, and as many believe to understand? Let's look at the background letter Colossians. Domin they were dominated by paganism, but and so we don't get into you know all the nuance of stuff here. So basically, they had a bunch of laws and like material laws, like we do, right? Don't cross the street, all this stuff, which was really written against us, <laughs> right? But um, it's anyways. I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, Paul's concern can see reading in the first chapter of Colossians. There in verse 9 through 10, he desires that they be filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding of the knowledge of Yahweh. In verses 13 through 20, he shows that Yeshua is the full, or fullness of Yahweh and that Yeshua himself was the creator. He ends the last two verses of the chapter declaring, oh, excuse me, striving to present every man perfect in the Messiah. Paul's point is that Yeshua is the head of the body, the assembly. In chapter 2, Paul warns the believers not to be taken by those who would beguile them, verse 4, nor be spoiled, as spoiled by war, through, philosoph or through philosophy and vain deceit by the traditions of men, you see that, and the elementary teachings of the world, verse 8. In verse 10, Paul points out that the believer who has been baptized is complete in Messiah. In the verse 13, he says the believer is now living a new life with his sins forgiven. Notice that in verse 13, it is the Father who has made the believer alive and has forgiven all trespasses. Yahweh is the subject here. Verse 14 tells how he did it, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us took it out of the way, nailing it to the tree of his son, Yeshua. The handwriting of ordinances is not the Ten Commandments, which were written on two tablets of stone by Yahweh's own finger. These ordinances were handwritten by man. They were not engraved on two tablets or stone, as were the Ten Commandments. In addition, this handwriting of ordinances, Paul says, is against us, contrary to us. This certainly cannot be the Ten Commandments, for they are not against us. Amen to that. David said, O oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all day. If King David 
the patriarchs, and Yeshua himself kept and obeyed Yahweh's law, how can this law be against us or contrary to us? We might act contrary to his law, but certainly his law is not against or contrary to us. The problem was always with man, never the law. Amen to that. Now, I kind of want to take this a little bit further because... Because this is this is what okay an ordinance, right, can also mean this it is a religious ritual whose intent is to demonstrate an adherence faith. So, if that you know if the ordinance here, I think in my opinion, has to be you know the Levitical system right he did away with that because now we don't we have a lamb which is Jesus Christ right so one so another version of ordinance can mean a religious religious ritual see here again right I'll prove it to you here's Wikipedia even though Wikipedia is hard to be trusted but um, an ordinance is a term used by certain Christian dominant for a religious ritual that was instituted by Jesus or Christians to observe. Or an ordinance. In latter day saint movement, the term or, yeah, um, ordinance, or is it, yeah, ordinance is used to refer to sacred rites and ceremonies that have spiritual symbolic. God ordained ceremony. Ordinances. Right? Ordinances of Christian rite. See? So, in my opinion, I just saw this too. It's the Levitical system that he brought it out, right? Because here's Paul now saying again, 1 Corinthians 11 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So, either Paul is contradicting himself or he's talk, talking about the Levitical system right because here he's talking about you know the same wording is where is it away from mine ordinances so it can be laws right now I'm not saying that this person could be right right and I believe a lot of what he's saying here. But ordinances could also mean a religious ceremony. So take it for what you will, whatever you want to, you know. But here's Paul saying, <laughs> and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you, right? The Ten Commandments. That, you could be also saying the religious ceremonies of God right the three feasts of the year the the seven you know holy days and whatnot right so but anyways um I just wanted to bring that up because I know people are gonna bring that but anyways now we're gonna go to Jesus what Christianity is all about right Matthew 21 and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to a Bethphage, or Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives. I still can't say that word, man. I always have a hard time with that. Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straight away ye shall find an ass, tied in a colt with her, loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say out unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them and straight away he will send them. And all this was done that might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, saying, Tell yet the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and colt of a fowl of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them in their clothes, and they set him therein, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw or strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. Hmm. Starting to see the heart of Jesus here. It said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Ain't that the truth today? And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed them. Yeah. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son David or son of David, they were sore displeased. You see, they couldn't they couldn't be happy that people were being saved and all that. They were displeased because people were learning the truth and seeing and they were losing their power right before their eyes. Right? All that gatekeeping wasn't gonna happen too much longer. Right? Because these people were learning the truth and seeing the Messiah, right? They couldn't be happy that he was there and that they that they finally see the Messiah. No. No. Anyways. And said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes sucklings thou hast perfected praise? And he left them and went out to the city into Beth or Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and found nothing therein, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on the henceforward forever, and presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. See, there's that faith thing that I was talking about, right? The weapon of mass destruction to the kingdom of darkness. In all things whatsoever ye shall ask a prayer, believing ye shall receive. I wanted to put this in there. All right, here we go. The bat, or here we go. And Jesus answered, and said unto them, "I will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it, and from heaven or of men?" And they reason with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, we will say unto us, or he will say unto us, Why did he not then believe him? Or why did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. Doing the little cop out. Sound like a politician, huh? And he said unto them, Neither tell you, or tell I you by what authority I do these things. Amen. See how Jesus is always against the little gatekeepers. The rich elite. There's a reason why I'm reading all this by the way. But what, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And came to first and said. Son go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said. I will not. But after repented and went. And came to the second. And likewise, and answered and said, I go, sir, and I went not. His father, wait, hold on. Oh, okay, this is where I wanted, okay, okay, I'm sorry, guys. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. You see that? And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him you see that guys the publicans and sinners right is the one that jesus is looking for 
what does Jesus say that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to make it to heaven? Anyways, Matthew twenty three thirteen through thirty nine. Here we go. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For neither you go into yourselves, or go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for the pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for where there is greater the gold or the temple that sanctify the gold. And, amen, and, and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. He fool, or ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things therein. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that or shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth therein. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, ye hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and an anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are ye, or ye to, or sorry, uh, ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, ye hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of exhaustion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that thou which is within the cup and platter, that outside of them may be clean also. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto the whited sepulchres, with indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. <sighs> Amen, man. Even so, ye are also outward appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Yep. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. You know how, I want to say this real quick. You know how we sit there and go, well, I wouldn't have done that. You know, one thing I've come to learn, if I was put in Hitler's, you know, Hitler's position. Uh, it'd probably be the same exact way. That's just the truth. You know? And this is Jesus saying, all you people who think you wouldn't have killed the prophets, you are the sons and daughters of them that killed them. Right? So don't think that you are special, that you're some special. You know? Fill ye up with the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill, and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogue, and persecute them from city to city. Hmm, that came true, guys, seems like Jesus... Maybe he is the Messiah. Maybe he is God. 
that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of the righteous, Abel, unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Bar Barachias, whom slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come unto this generation, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that thou killest the prophets, and stonest them that which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as hen gathered her chickens unto her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ. And you have churches out there that literally say that Jesus' words were just for the Jew. Shut up. You know nothing. Jesus came for the world, not just for the Jew. Sorry. Anyways. I hope you guys really get edified by this one, you know. And like I said, I'm going to call myself out when I need to be called out because I could have answered that question a little bit better instead of giving some wish-washy answer, you know, and I apologize for that. But I want to give you guys the truth. And ain't nothing better than the truth than the Word of God, right? So if you guys have anybody who asked this question, show them these verses, you know. <laughs> My job was to give you guys the, the ammo, right? And I just want you guys to have the truth. It ain't in me. It's in Jesus Christ. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's the only way we are going to get through this, to be honest with you. But anyways, let me say a quick prayer. Lord, for anybody that's willing to come to you today, Lord, just let them in. Show them the truth. Show them the way and the life. Show them your son. And what he has done for me and for the whole world is just miraculous, Lord. And we thank you. And let the people out there who want to come to you, let them confess with their mouth, Lord, that you are the King, the God. You know, and that there is none else like you. We thank you. Just lead us into truth and not into temptation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.